get started. Good evening. I am Courtney coming live from my house. I'm excited to be here. Um, so if you don't have a block, you can grab a couple books and however you want to sit is fine with me. So if you want to sit crisscross, that's great. If you want to sit legs out, just finding a comfortable seat and you can really bend the knees here to keep that spine nice and long. However you feel comfortable, I'm going to sit on my block to grow up a little bit taller. And then when you're ready, we'll just gently close the eyes, taking a full breath in through the nose and letting it all out through the mouth. Taking a full breath in and a full breath out. Last full breath, deep, deep, deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then when you're ready, just allowing the breath to come in and out through the nose, just naturally breathing. Noticing that the air moving in through the nostrils is cooler than the air moving back out. As we start to slow the breath down, we can start to slow the mind down, slow the thoughts down. Maybe even shifting the weight back a little tiny bit, finding that center, allowing the shoulders to soften away from the ears. Maybe a little slight tuck of the chin to open up the back of the neck. And reaching the crown of the head up towards the sky. And with each exhalation, really allow the face to soften, forehead and the jaw. Maybe setting an, uh, an intention for your practice. Could be for yourself. Maybe something you need to let go of. And then sealing that intention with a full deep breath in. And a full breath out. When you're ready, taking a full breath in and shrugging the shoulders all the way up towards the ears, squeezing them up. And on your exhale, letting them slide down the back. So this can be a heavy drop too. Inhale to rise the shoulders up. And you can let them fall away or drop away or roll them back down, whatever feels best for you. Two more, up and back. Inhale to squeeze them up. Exhale, down the back. And maybe a little slight wrap of the shoulder blades around the spine to open up the heart center. And when you're ready, we'll let the chin just drop down towards the chest. We're really working those shoulders away from the ears. Breathing into the back of the neck. And then slowly rolling the head over to the right. And then drawing the chin back down and over to the left. Pausing anywhere you feel tension or stress to breathe into those spaces. Last two rounds, inhaling and exhaling. The next time you come back through center, pause with your chin down towards the chest. Really roll those shoulders away one last time, taking a full breath in and a full breath out. And then reaching the crown of the head back up skyward. I'm going to take, come off of my block, sitting up tall. Do a little bit of Sufi circles. Inhale to press the heart and chest forward. And as you exhale, We'll go all the way around, rounding the spine as you move away. Inhale as you move forward, and then exhale as you move away. Really rounding and doming the spine as you go away. Starting to warm up the spine, warm up the hips, low back. 
Eyes can be open or closed, and we'll move in the opposite direction. Inhale as you move forward, and then exhaling as you move back away. Last two, all the way around. And then when you're ready, sitting up nice and tall, taking a full breath in and out. And then however you have your legs crossed, let's cross them the other way. If they're crossed, if they're legs out, you can still stay like that. Oh, I got mine the wrong way. No, this way. When you're ready, taking a full breath in to reach the arms up skyward. And as you exhale, we're gonna twist to the right. So twisting. Just warming up the spine, so it doesn't have to be a deep twist. Inhale to rise up, exhale to twist. And then the hand that's behind you, it's my right hand, sweep it up and over. So you kind of side bend with a twist. Taking a full breath. And out. And then slowly releasing. Inhale to lift. Exhale, twisting in the opposite direction. I'm over to my left this time. Right hand to knee, fingertips behind you to lift the crown of the head skyward. Exhale, twist past the shoulder. And then lifting those left fingertips up and skyward, finding that side bend with the twist. And then slowly releasing, retracing those steps. Inhale to rise. And then exhale, bring the right hand down and just a little length over to the right side. Still warming up the spine. And we want to check in that the ribs don't start to flare out. We keep those ribs knitted together and seeing if you can find some length in this right side body as you reach over. Imagining breathing right into the side. And then inhale to rise. Exhale over to your left. And then checking in with the ribs, a little spin of the heart up towards the sky. Find all the length in both side bodies. Ground both sit bones down evenly into the ground. And then on your next inhale, rising up, two arms come skyward. We'll circle one arm back, coming high on the fingertips. The other arm comes back, high on the fingertips. Press the fingers into the ground to lift the heart up to the sky, pinching the shoulder blades together, opening up the heart center for three, two, and one. Coming up. And starting to walk out, walking the palms out. So even if your legs are out long, you can still do this. Breathing here, you'll just feel it more in your hamstrings. And if your legs are crisscrossed, you'll start to feel it more in that low back. And as you exhale, you can always bring a book or a block under the forehead. See if you can just melt here. And as you melt, see if you can press the hands into the ground to lower the sit bones back onto the ground. Breathing right into that low back. And then when you're ready, start to walk the hands back up. We'll move right onto our hands and knees, keeping the blocks at the front of the mat. So coming onto hands and knees, hands under, uh, hand, I'm sorry, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Hips are two fists width apart, so you're not too wide there. And when you're ready, we'll move through a few cats and cows, inhaling to drop the belly down, open up the heart, the chest, roll those shoulders back. Exhale to round the spine, tuck the chin, reach the crown of the head towards the mat. Inhale to drop down. So moving with your own breath, seeing if you can inhale all the way through your cow and exhale all the way through your calf. Last one. And then coming back to that neutral spine, find your tabletop. Find that your core is engaged and you're drawing your navel up behind your rib cage. Rip, knit the ribs together. Crown of the head is reaching in the opposite direction of the tailbone. And when you're ready, we'll reach the right foot back, 
press through to the heel. We're gonna keep the ball of the foot down on the mat. Inhale as you roll up and over onto the top of the foot, and then exhale, roll back through. Inhale, rolling up and over. Exhale, roll back through. And then the next time you roll back, really press back here. Press, press, press. And then inhale to come to center. When you're ready, we'll pick up that right leg, keeping it level with the hip or lower. So you can keep it down here or lifting. If you're lifting, find that your right hip is still facing down towards your mat because it wants to start to open up and the belly wants to start to hang down. We're gonna keep all that nice and tight, staying here or extending left arm nice and long. Little tuck of the chin, so the crown of the head is reaching with the fingertips, right leg is fired up, hips or are level. Reaching here, you should feel it in the core. If you want to do a little bit more, you can start to pulse the arm and leg up. Up, up for five, four, three, two, and one. Hand comes down, knee comes down. I'm gonna thread the needle so the right arm comes, sweeps open wide, a big twist of the thoracic spine, and then exhale, we're gonna thread it through. Palm goes skyward under the left arm and start to lower down on the right shoulder and right ear. So option to bring your book underneath your ear for a little extra support here as we start to open up the shoulders. Left arm can walk out nice and long, breathing. If the left arm long is um, too much on the shoulder, you can always bring that hand, um, left hand back under the left shoulder for a little extra support. One last breath here. And then when you're ready, we'll take that left hand back under the left shoulder, retrace your steps. So inhale to sweep open wide, big exaggerated stretch, and then bring that right hand back underneath the right shoulder. The left foot goes back this time. Left ball of the foot, press it back. Open up the back side of that left leg. Inhale, roll up and over onto the top. And then exhale to roll back through. Inhale to roll up and over. Exhale to roll back through. Two or three more at your own pace. And the next time you roll back, we'll pause there. Really press back through that heel. And then coming back through center. When you're ready, engage the core. Start to peel up that left leg. Make it nice and strong. Hips are level. And then a little tuck of the chin to reach the crown of the head in the opposite direction. And if you want, extending right arm nice and long next to, next to the ear. Breathing here. And if you want to get that little pulse action, a little extra core, pulsing up, up, up. So just the arm and leg are moving, not the core. They're staying still for five, four, three, two, and one. Hand comes down, knee comes down, getting ready to thread the needle with the second side. Left arm is going to sweep open wide, big, big, big stretch. Exhale, thread it through, palm faces skyward. Lower down on left shoulder, left ear. You can walk that right arm out. You can also place a book or a block underneath the shoulder, or I'm sorry, the head, the ear. Taking a full breath in and a full breath out, right into that shoulder. And then when you're ready, we'll retrace those steps, bringing right hand down. Inhale to sweep that left arm open wide, big breath, and then exhale back, back down. Walking the hands out one hand print each. And we're gonna start to open up that low back. Inhale, pressing forward, opening up. So this can be as big or as small as you want. And then exhale, press back towards your child's pose. Chin comes down, head comes down. Inhale, rolling forward, big breath in. Exhale, 
all the way back. Inhale, pressing forward. And then this time as you come back, tuck the toes under and exhale, press all the way back, pressing the balls of the feet into the ground. Pausing there, take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhaling, coming up, keeping the toes tucked, and the hands where they are, start to press back for your first downward facing dog. And when you arrive, bending a knee, straightening a knee, warming up that backside, whatever you like to do, just check in with those ribs, knit them together, keeping that tummy tight. Breathing here. Do a little bit of a body scan on your downward facing dog. Fingers spread wide. You're not too wide that you're overextending. I like to do a little grip of my fingertips to help take some pressure off my wrists. Shoulder blades are rolling away from the ears down the back. Hips are reaching up skyward. My bottom rib is working towards being in line with my pelvis. Hamstrings are lengthening as I reach my heels towards the ground, taking a full breath in and a full breath out. And then when you're ready, inhale, ride that breath forward for plank, fire up the legs. So press through to the heels, really strong legs here. Lower the knees, we're gonna come all the way onto the belly. Let the big toes touch, let the cheek come to the mat, arms to the sides, taking a breath here. We do a little bit of opposite work. When I teach kids, uh, teach kids yoga, I do a lot of opposites. It's really good for your brain. Let's reach the right arm, of both arms nice and long. And thinking about the inhale is going to lengthen you up or do opposite arm and leg, and then exhale brings you down. So we'll try that together. Inhale to peel up right arm, left leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, exhale. So if you're breathing different than me, that's fine. You do your own breath. And then the next time you lift your right arm and left leg, hold. Right arm, left leg, hold. Left arm, right leg. So two arms and two legs are up. We're gonna do a little bit of quick swimming. Go, five four, three, two, and one. Big toes touch, cheeks to the mat. Breathe. And then when you're ready, we'll, if you have a sensitive back, you're allowed to bring those feet nice and wide. If you don't, glue those legs together. Everybody will Ground the toenails down into the ground to lift the kneecaps up off of the mat. Hands to mid ribs, elbows nice and tight. Face hovers above the mat. We'll take three flowing baby cobras. So baby meaning we're just warming up. Inhale to rise, exhale to lower. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, third one. And then let's take one more, but this time we'll lift a little bit higher. Keep your legs nice and strong. Look over your right shoulder and then look over your left shoulder. And then lower all the way down. Tuck your toes and press all the way back for your downward facing dog. And then as slow as you can, we're going to take a walk to the top of the mat. Maybe even heel to toe, heel to toe, but bending those knees as much as you need to, to walk on up. And when you arrive, if you like folding forward, go ahead and grab opposite elbow. My, my feet are still uh, hip distance apart so that I have a better foundation. If folding forward makes you feel like you're gonna pass out, come to your flat back or all the way to stand. So whatever feels good for you. If you're folding forward, you can really let the weight of the crown of the head release all that tension, stress, build up in the neck and shoulders, let it go. 
Maybe a little sway side to side. And then releasing the arms down, toe peeling those feet back so that the feet touch. And if you are not folded forward, you can go ahead and skip this next one. If you're folded forward, start to walk the hands over to the right, but keeping the hips where they are so that the hips want to go with you. See if you can just keep the hips where they are and start to walk the fingertips over so you find all this space in the left side body. And then inhale back through center. Exhale over to your left. So working the right shoulder forward, right hip back, breathing here. And then inhale to walk the hands back through center. Bend the knees nice and deep, press the hands onto the thighs to rise up. Sweeping the arms up, take a full breath, palms touch overhead, and then bringing those hands to heart center and pausing, taking a full breath in and a full breath out. And we'll bring the feet together, sweeping those arms all the way up, palms face each other. And then as you exhale, we'll pretend we're sitting in a chair, Utkatasana, working the knees together, the hips together. Option to bring those feet two fists width apart also. Then you wouldn't work the knees necessarily together, but you would still work those hips towards one another as much as possible. And you should be able to see your toes and give them a little wiggle. Breathing here for three, two, one. Hands come together, let them float to the heart, float to the earth. Inhale for a flat back, nice long spine. Exhale to fold. And if you have your blocks or your books, they're nice to have. We're gonna peel up the left leg and shoot it all the way back so that we're high on that left heel, left ball of the foot. So the left heel is lifted. Right knee over right ankle. And as you inhale, pressing the heart forward, opening up that left hip flexor. Feet are hip distance apart. Exhale to round over. So working that left hip down, working that right knee straight-ish, right? Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Working your forehead towards your knee. Inhale as you press forward. And then exhale, rounding over. One more inhale, press forward, open up the heart, the chest. Exhale, round over. And if you want, you can peel up those toes, the right toes, flip them up towards the sky, breathing. And then lowering the toes down, bring the hands to the earth, stepping back plank. We'll modify our first vinyasa. Knees come to the mat, graze the side bodies with the elbows, chin and, chin and chest to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Tuck the toes, press all the way back, downward facing dog. Right leg reaches skyward. And then exhale, use your core to step that right foot all the way up. Stepping left foot right up with it. Inhale for a flat back, nice long spine. Exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. Sit in your chair, Utkatasana, breathing. Find your shoulders away from the ears, neutral pelvis. Breathe. Hands float to the heart, exhale to bow forward. Inhale, halfway up, exhale to fold. Peeling up right foot this time and shoot it all the way back. Find your feet hip distance apart. Find your blocks, left knee over left ankle. Inhale to press forward, open up the heart, the chest. Exhale to round over, keeping that right hip working down. Inhale, pressing forward, heart opens. Exhale, round over. One more, inhale. Exhale. And if you flipped your toes on the first side, let's flip those left toes skyward. Exhale, 
and then slowing it down. Lose the blocks, hands to the earth. Step left foot to meet the right. If you're moving through a full vinyasa, remembering chaturanga is halfway down. Inhale to roll over toes, pelvis stays up. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Left leg reaches skyward, reach it high, and then exhale, step it through. Right foot follows right behind it. Inhale for a flat back, nice long spine. Exhale to fold. Sweep those arms forward and up, sit in your chair, Utkatasana, breathe. Hands come to the heart center and fold. Inhale, halfway up, nice long spine. Exhale, fold. Hands come down, we're peeling up the left leg and shooting it all the way back. And when you're ready, so build your foundation first, two feet hip distance apart, right knee over right ankle, really strong back leg. You can always bring this left knee down to modify. Inhale to rise up, press into the back foot to rise up and breathe. And then bring hands to heart center, lengthen out, and as you exhale, twist elbow to knee. Option to drop the right knee, uh, left knee down. And then inhale to unwind, reach the arms skyward, and exhale, fold over. Stepping right foot to meet left. A vinyasa or straight to your down dog. Taking a full breath in and a full breath out. Right leg reaches skyward. And then this time we'll bend that right knee, let the right foot hang over to the left, breathe into the hip. Stepping right foot all the way up in between the hands, left foot follows right behind it. Inhale for your flat back, nice long spine. Exhale to fold. Inhale to sweep the arms forward and up, sit in your chair, Utkatasana. And then bringing those hands to heart center and bowing forward. Inhale, coming up halfway, nice long spine. Exhale to fold. Peeling up right foot this time, shoot it all the way back. Build your foundation, feet hip distance apart, left knee over left ankle, strong back leg. Inhale to rise. Getting ready for your twist, hands to your heart center. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale to twist. Still breathing. And unwinding. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to lengthen over. Left foot steps back. I'll modify this time. Lowering knees, chin and chest to the ground. Inhale for a cobra. And then exhaling, pressing back, downward facing dog. Taking a full breath in and out. Left leg reaches all the way skyward. Bending left knee, let the left foot hang over to the right. Breathe into the hip. Should feel good. And then when you're ready, step that left foot all the way up in between the hands. Right foot follows right behind it. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale to fold. Sit in your chair, Utkatasana. Sit. 
And then inhale, lift, straight legs. Exhale, we're bowing all the way down. Do a little bit more standing. Inhale to lift, exhale to fold. This time, stepping your left foot back. Coming to your Virabhadrasana one. So my back heel is down this time. We're gonna do Virabhadrasana one to Virabhadrasana three, which is a balancing pose. So arms come skyward, shoulders are towards the front of your mat. Your left hip is working that way, but without compromising the knee. Right knee over right ankle. Strong arms, take a big breath in and a big breath out. When you're ready, find something to stare at, your drishti, one little spot out in front of you, start to shift the weight onto that front foot. We're gonna make our body to a capital T. This hip starts to crank down. This leg is really strong, left leg is really strong. Reaching fingertips and heel in opposite directions for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale to stand. Exhale to dive down. Inhale, float up halfway. Exhale, bowing forward. Right foot steps all the way back this time. Virabhadrasana one, second side. My left foot is in front this time. My back heel is down. Inhale to rise up. When you're ready, find your drishti, your stair. Start to shift the weight onto that front foot. Engage that right leg as you lift yourself into a capital T. Little slight tuck of the chin. Reach the crown of the head with the fingertips. Breathing. Five, four, three, two. Inhale to stand. Exhale to dive down. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. And then bring those feet nice and wide. And we're gonna come all the way down into a yogi squat. If yogi squat isn't your thing, you can skip it, or you can bring a block or a book underneath your bottom for a little extra support. So you can just sit there hands to heart center, especially if you're looking for a little more restorative, stick a book under there. When you're ready, inhale, we're sweeping right arm open wide. And then bring it back to your heart. Inhale, sweeping left arm open wide. And then bring it back to your heart. Press into your feet Inhale to rise up, and then exhale, release. Wonderful. Coming back down onto the mat, we'll stretch those legs out, coming to a comfortable seat. So pulling the flesh from the sit bones, reaching those arms up nice and tall, take a full breath. I have to bend my knees so that my back stays nice and tall. When I start to straighten them, I dump into my low back. So find a nice long spine. Inhale to rise. Exhale to lengthen out over those legs, wherever your hands fall, and then see if you can melt right there. You can try to bring a block under the, or a book under the forehead. You can try that. If you like it. And then when you're ready, inhaling to roll it up. We're gonna go all the way onto the back because I'd like to do a little more of the hip opening. So when you're ready, arms can come forward, take a big breath in, and as you exhale, we're rolling all the way down. Good. Taking, take the legs up. So we'll take the right ankle across the left thigh towards the ankle, it looked like an upside down four or a supine pigeon pose. We'll take the right arm through the legs and grab a hold of the left hamstring. 
Start to bend the left knee until the left toes fall out of sight. And on your exhale, we'll draw the knees in, draw the left thigh in rather, and work that right knee out. So we want to check in with this low back. Uh, very common for the tailbone to want to come with you. See if you can lower that tailbone down, find length in that low back. Breathe here as you draw it in. And then from here, placing that left foot down and cross the right leg over on top of the left. So my right thigh is crossed over. Arms come like a T or cactus arms. So my cactus arms or T, palms face down. Find your block. And as you exhale, we're gonna let those knees fall over to the left. And you can kind of stick the block underneath the knees for a little extra support. I like it because it really allows me to relax my low back and my hip instead of having to hold my knees in midair. And then to complete the twist, we'll look over the right shoulder, breathing here. On your next inhalation, unwinding the spine, reach that right leg skyward and then start to bend the right knee. We're working it in towards our armpit. Option to hold onto the hamstring, ankle, or maybe you can grab the whole foot here for a half happy baby pose or a half dead bug, whatever you like to call it. Exhale, draw it in. You don't have to pull too much because we have gravity working with us on this one. Relaxing the face and the jaw. And then when you're ready, reach that leg skyward and then reach it all the way down to the mat. Lengthen the left leg nice and long just to pause for a moment to notice the difference between the right and left hips. And then when you're ready, legs come skyward. We'll take the left ankle across the right thigh. Start to bend the right knee until the right toes fall out of sight. We're going to grab a hold of that hamstring. As you exhale, start to draw it in. Find that the low back is lengthening down, working the left knee open with the left elbow. Breathing. Pain is definitely a sign to stop. And on your next exhalation, we'll let that right foot touch down. Take your book with you or block. Cross your left thigh over the right. We'll let those let knees go over to the right, keeping the right shoulder down on the mat so you can bring those arms wide into a T, palms face down, or palms face up, gazing out over left shoulder. And then when you're ready, inhale to unwind. Shoot that left leg up into the air. We're gonna grab a hold of either the hamstring, the ankle, maybe the foot, wherever you are, working it towards the armpit. Left knee to lift armpit, breathe into the hip. Pain is a sign to stop. One last breath here. And then slowly releasing, reach it skyward. We'll let it flow all the way down. Lengthen both legs nice and long, pause there, notice the hips. And then we'll bring both feet flat. If you have a block or a book, you can stick it in between the knees. We'll take a bridge pose. So 
And when you're ready, roll those shoulders down away from the ears, arms to the sides, press the feet into the ground to peel the hips up towards the sky, and then squeeze that block or book. Squeeze it there, rise up. Squeeze and rise up. Breathe. A little space between the chin and the chest, little space between the back of the neck and your mat. Face is relaxed, has nothing to do with the face. Breathe, lift higher. And then when you're ready, we'll roll it down one vertebrae at a time. Take your time. And then pause at the bottom. Stay right there, take a full breath in. Then a full breath out. Pressing the feet into the ground to lift up one more bridge. Lifting, 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 squeeze that block. And if you want to get more into your shoulders, start to roll the shoulder blades under. Tuck those shoulders under. Interlace the fingers. Let the knuckles reach down towards the feet. Lifting high on the shoulders. Breathe. Pain is a sign to stop. I know I keep saying that. Because I'm not with you, so I can't see what you're doing. Breathing here and lifting high. And then we'll retrace those steps. Release the hands, release the shoulders, roll one vertebrae down at a time. Releasing your block, shooting the legs skyward. Pausing here. So option to stay here with the legs straight up. Get all the benefits still of the shoulder stand. So getting the blood flowing in the opposite direction, lowering your heart rate stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. So you can certainly stay right here, maybe flip those palms skyward and relax. You can also take a supported shoulder stand by taking the book or your block underneath the sacrum, finding your little sweet spot, and then you'd wanna lift one leg and then lift the other. If you're feeling any pinching or pain, just move your block around. You can stay here. Or if you're feeling like you want to go all the way into your shoulder stand, you can certainly do that by holding onto your low back and then reaching up. A little more of an active posture because you really want to engage those legs, shoot some energy through your toes, either point your toes, put your Barbie feet on, or flex your feet like you're going to walk on the ceiling. Breathing here, engage those legs, get them right over the hips. And then whenever you're done playing, we will slowly release. Bringing your feet as wide as your mat. Arms come wide in a T, a little windshield wiper side to side, or palms flip up. Notice if your ribs popped up, I know mine did, my body, lower those ribs down. And then squeezing those knees in towards the chest. Turn yourself into a little tiny ball one last time. Big breath in. If you want, exhale, reach the forehead up towards the knees. On your next exhale, let everything melt down. If you would like to feel more hip opening, draw those soles of the feet together for a supine Baddha You can always take your books underneath the knees or the thighs, I find is nice. You can let those legs go long. If you have a pillow nearby, you can stick a pillow under the knees. And we'll just surrender here. Or if that, another option would be feet flat, knees can touch one another. So wherever you are, giving yourself permission to find stillness. Taking a full breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Relaxing each and every toe. Relaxing balls of the feet, arches of the feet, heels of the feet, ankles, calves and shins, kneecaps, hamstrings, quads, hips, Softening the belly, letting it rise and fall. Softening around the heart center. Letting the shoulders 
Relax away from the ears, letting the arms be heavy. Relaxing the wrists, palms, thumbs, all of the fingers. Relaxing the neck and throat, jaw, cheekbones, tip of the nose, eye sockets, forehead, and the very tippy top of your head. As you surrender here, just pay attention to that little tiny breath moving in and out through the nose. And as the mind begins to wander, acknowledge your thought and bring it back to that little tiny breath. Feeling free to stay here as long as you like. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.